and welcome to this episode of The Collector's Corner, brought to you by the Washington Arms Collectors. This episode is entitled Dumpster, Fraudster, No Sir, and is aimed at those who collect antique arms, whether swords, long arms, or sidearms. But I think it will have wider interest because we're going to be using forensic techniques drawn from crime scene investigation. Now, if you were one of those who binge-watched the original CBS series CSI, or Crime Scene Investigation, you were treated to an ensemble cast consisting of William Peterson, uh, Mark Helgenberger, and Georgia Fox, among others. You were also delighted with intricate plots, the MacGuffin of which was generally some forensic technique. Today, we're going to be using forensic techniques, which I will style old school, new school, and ancient school, to assess antique arms. We want you to avoid adding to your collection something that more, probably more properly belongs in a dumpster, which may be advocated by a fraudster. We want you to say no, sir, to fraudulent purchases and foolish purchases, which could diminish your collecting budget old school books. They are invaluable. Yes, you can go online, but there's no substitute for scholarly texts written about your field of collecting. Now, if you're in forensics, you quickly learn two rules for pathology, that the good books are large books, and they are expensive books. I have here Cotrain's The Pathologic Basis of Disease, many pages, and expensive to own. But the many pages allows footnoting. It allows bibliography, all essential for you to get to know your field of collecting. Expensive because the runs are limited and sometimes they're in high demand. Yes, it may cost you two or three hundred dollars to own invaluable texts like this book about the Adams revolvers, and you may say, Why should I spend more than twenty-five dollars on such a book? Because by such expenditure, you may avoid spending thousands of dollars on something which isn't quite what you're looking for. A good rule of thumb is, before you buy, buy a book. And if I prove wrong, and you can find the Adams book for 80 pounds, you could have the savage pleasure of saying, I got it cheaper. New School. New School is as timeless as the creation account where it says, let there be light. And we're going to be talking about two types of light intense natural spectrum light, and the UV crime light. Now, intense natural spectrum light can be very useful with such things as this. This is a Webley's number no. 2 flat bottom, an exceedingly rare revolver. It appears to have rust at certain points of the frame, and the cylinder has what appears to be original bluing. However, if you take an intense natural light of at least 300 lumens and apply it, you see that there are brush strokes and buffing marks. This has been cold re-blued. Now, you may still wish to own such an item as this, but it's good to be aware. What about the ultraviolet light? Well, in CSI work and on the CSI television program, they many times use an ultraviolet crime light to uh, spot biologicals on hotel sheets. Well, we can also spot modern paper. I have here what appears to be a uh, vintage gun case label. It looks old, it looks aged, but if you shine an ultraviolet light on it, you find it fluoresces back very brightly because modern paper uses bleach in its production. And there we have real faux. Faux Real. Faux. Re I'm not talking about that soup either. Now, ancient school. Find yourself 
a rabbi. No, no, you don't have to study the Talmud or the Mishnah. What I'm talking about is find yourself a mentor, somebody who has spent years and thousands of dollars making mistakes so he can advise you how to avoid making such mistakes. Now, in my brief foray into forensic pathology, I had as my rabbi or mentor someone I'll call Big Tony. Big Tony taught me what tetracycline does to human bones, and he also taught me about something which is called the Throckmorton response. You can Google that. I'm not going to discuss that here. Now, where do you find um, a rabbi or a mentor? Well, you can go to various online uh, forums, look for people who do not flame, but argue, perhaps passionately, but rationally. Look for people who use footnotes in their arguments, and perhaps there are even people who write the editions which have the footnotes. Also, an invaluable resource are the members of the Washington Arms Collectors and our sister organization, the Oregon Arms Collectors. And you'll find many people at our shows who are more than willing to be your rabbi and provide some mentoring. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Collector's Corner. Please stay tuned for the next episode. Until then, keep your powder dry, your money ready, and both eyeballs scun for those amazing historical items and bargains on the tables of the Washington Arms Collectors or our sister organization, the Oregon Arms Collectors. Thank you very much.